Flight of the Honeybee by Raymond Hubber, illustrated by Brian Lovelock. The honeybee is one of the smallest creatures in the world, but it may be the most important for life on Earth. It is the planet's greatest pollinator, moving pollen from one plant to another causing flowers to produce seeds and fruits. Honeybees can live in the wild or in boxes made by beekeepers. A honeybee can't live alone. It's part of a family that works closely together. A bee is always changing jobs. First, she is a cleaner, then a babysitter, a builder, a guard, a scout, and finally, a harvester. This is the story of a scout. Flight of the honeybee. A bee the size of a cherry pit crawls from the hive. Her stripes glow golden in the morning sun. Scout has spent her whole life in the crowded hive. Now it is time for her to fly out and explore the world. Time to search for flowers from which to collect pollen and nectar for food. Her sister bees are inside making honey, but will there be enough? The cold is coming and Scout must find the last flowers of the fall. There are about 50,000 female bees in a hive and very few males. Scout's wings hum to life so fast that they are almost invisible. Lifting her into the wide sky, she rises in a spiral up and away from the hive. Scout remembers what she passes as she flies, so later she can return home. She knows the sun will guide her too. Bees navigate using sunlight, landmarks, and smell. They also have a magnetic sense that is like a built-in compass. Scout flies swift and straight as an arrow. The wind buffets her, ruffling the fine hairs on her face but she keeps on steadily and rides out the rapids. Eyes as black as polished stones are searching, seeking a splash of color below. An arresting smell drifts on the breeze. Scout locks onto this scent. She flies over a clearing and spread before her is a marvelous meadow, an ocean of flowers. These are furry even their eyeballs. The hairs help them sense changes in the wind. Bees have a powerful sense of smell. They use their antennae to pick up scents. Bees can smell in stereo, each antenna smelling in a different direction. A flash of feathers. A hungry blackbird swoops for the kill, but Scout zips down and escapes into the trees, weaving between tangled twigs. Many creatures eat honeybees, including other insects, such as wasps and dragonflies, as well as spiders, frogs, birds, birds and mammals, such as bears and badgers. When the coast is clear, Scout is drawn to the sea of flowers again. She settles on a velvety petal and plunges her head into the flower. Here is sunken treasure, a cup of sweet nectar. The tip of her tongue, shaped like a miniature spoon, sips the syrup. Scout zigs and zags from flower to flower, spreading pollen around. The pollen clings to her fuzzy body, 
a sprinkle of sun powder. These are charged with static electricity during flight, which attracts pollen to their bodies. They have an extra stomach in which they carry nectar home. Scout has finished drinking. She must tell her sister bees about this field of blue, but a thundercloud cloaks the sun. All at once the cloud bursts. Rain batters Scout to the ground. She crawls under a leaf as hailstone bombs explode around her. Bees avoid rain and storms. Raindrops can damage them and chill their wing muscles, leaving them grounded. The downpour passes. Scout picks up the scent of her hive and follows it. Outside the hive, there's a squad of guard bees. A yellow jacketed enemy is attacking. Scout knows that twitchy way of flying. It's a wasp. The wasp grabs Scout as she glides into land. It raises its stinger, but the guards move in, wrestling the wasp with their legs. Wasps invade beehives to steal honey and eat baby bees. Honey bees sting only to defend themselves. They will die after stinging larger animals. Scout is safe inside the hive at last. She begins a dance on the wax comb. An audience gathers captivated by the floral scent on Scout's body. Scout spins a story in dance, every movement a sentence. Scout waggles, twists, and turns, describing the route to the blue meadow. She pauses only to share samples of sweet nectar. Scout repeats her dance for many sister bees. The bee's dance is a complex language that can communicate millions of different messages. Now that the sister bees know where to find the meadow, hundreds of bees take off. They flick from the hive like golden pebbles. Bees need to harvest nectar from more than two million flowers to make enough honey to fill just one jar. Back in the hive, Scout passes her precious nectar to the house bees. They put it in the comb and fan it with their wings. The nectar will be transformed into go liquid gold, honey for the bees to eat. Nectar is mostly water until the bees dry, until be the bees dry and thicken it by beating their wings, converting it to honey. Scout visits the nursery where babysitter bees pluck the pollen from her body and mix it with the honey to feed the babies. The queen can lay thousands of eggs a day. It is the job of the few male bees in the hive to fertilize a new queen. Nearby sits the queen, long and lustrous. She is the mother of all the bees, laying eggs that look like tiny grains of rice. In its lifetime, a bee can travel more than 500 miles on flower runs until its wings eventually wear out. Exhausted after her mission, Scout rests her silvery wings for a spell. Soon she will join her sister bees in the blue meadow, meadow for a fall harvest. With enough honey, her family can now survive the winter. Scout's daring flight has been worth every beat of her wings.
save the bees. Pollination by bees gives us delicious apples, cherries, strawberries, nuts, and many vegetables. But honeybees are in danger of dying out. You can help bees by giving them food and clean places to live. Plant a variety of flowers, herbs, and flowering trees. Don't use toxic chemicals in gardens. Don't pollute the air or water. These steps will also help other pollinators, such as bumblebees, butterflies, small native bees, and other insects.